In this video, I'm going to go over how to create an eye assembly. In a previous video, I talked about how to bring eye parts into an assembly, and that's what I've done here. So each of the parts you see in front of you, these are all eye parts that I have fully constrained, and I now have a functioning assembly in front of me. Now, how do we make this an eye assembly so that it will update the same way that our parts do? So just like with the eye parts, we go to our Manage tab, and this time there will be a button there called Create Eye Assembly. So we click on that button and we're going to get the Eye Assembly Author pop-up. Now you'll notice at the bottom here that the current table doesn't really have anything in it. So instead of bringing in parameters like we do with the eye parts where we change the dimensional values, we actually bring in our 3D parts and then we can change which parts are part of the assembly. So let's go through these one at a time. So I'm going to bring in my left hand base. So I'm in my components tab. I select left hand base and then I click on this button in the middle that adds it to the table. So you'll notice it doesn't just add one column. It adds a whole bunch of stuff here. So let's go through this. So the first one says left hand base. Do we include or exclude it? Well, we want to include that. That's part of our assembly. So we're going to leave it on include. The second column here says to replace it. So do we want to replace this with a different part? Well, right now I'm creating the row. This first row here is going to be for my um, parts, my 113 parts or my 01 parts. So I'm going to leave it as 01. Now, the next one here says grounding status, grounded or ungrounded. Well, personally, when I create an assembly, I don't ground anything. I fully constrain it. So I could actually get rid of this column here. It's something I don't really need. So I'm going to click on delete column. And then this last column here is adaptive or non-adaptive. We're going to leave it with the default here that it's brought in. You could also delete this because we won't be changing this one. So I'm going to click on delete column. So really all I care about is whether or not that part's included and which part out of those I part options is included in the assembly. So let's go ahead now and bring in our next part, which is our right hand base. Okay, so again, right hand base, I'm going to include it. I want it to be 0, 1. I'm going to delete these two columns and then move on. So end effector arm. Now that I've inserted all of my components down into my table here, I'm just right clicking on the first column here and I'm choosing to insert row because I have three different assemblies so I need three different um, assembly members here. So the first thing we're going to do is decide, not decide, sorry, we're going to change these columns to whether or not they include the part and which part they need to include. So to start with, I'm just, I'm starting on the left so I don't miss anything and I'm starting with my left hand base. So for my second assembly right here, I want it to be base 02. And then for my third assembly, I want it to be base 03. And then I'm going to go on here and do that for my other parts. And I'm going to work my way through all of my components here and change them to base 02 or end effector arm 02 and then end effector arm 03 and so on and so forth so that the right member is showing up in these three different assemblies. Now you'll notice when we look at the external retaining rings here at the end, I've included them in this table as well. And you'll notice I don't have a table option to replace them. Now the reason for that is my external retaining rings don't change um, depending on my different hinge pin sizes here. So we're just going to keep them as they are and we're going to choose include. Now if you did have them change, then you could choose to exclude these ones and include other ones. So for example, if the size needed to change, I could bring in um, other external retaining rings. These ones are 5 32nds. I could bring in other ones and then I could say, okay, we're going to exclude the 5 32nds and then we're going to include the ones that are a different size or a different part number. So if you don't have an eye part, so these external retaining rings are not eye parts, they're just regular component center parts, you will not have an option to replace that part with a different eye part member. So once I've gone ahead and I've changed my table here and I've changed it to the correct members, I'm going to go ahead and click OK. The computer will generate my eye assembly and you'll notice in your model browser now it creates a table option for you right at the top here. If we hit the plus button beside that to expand it, we have our three assembly options right here. 
So right now I'm looking at assembly 01 and it's always, always, always a good idea to double click on each of these and to see what happens because if it updates incorrectly, chances are you maybe missed a part in your iAssembly table or um, something isn't created quite correctly. So I always do this for each of my I parts and my I assemblies. So let's take a look at 02. So my computer is still loading this one. It does slow down your computer quite a bit. So here is 02. If we spin this guy around, looks good. And does it work? It does. All right, so there's our 02 assembly. And let's take a look at 03. So there's our 03 assembly. You can see, of course, the sizes get, get quite a bit bigger as we go up. And if we see if this guy works, looks like the assembly works. All of my constraints are still in there. You'll notice I can't move my bases around because they're fully constrained in place. So the beautiful thing about the I assemblies are is, sorry, is that I do not need to create a separate assembly for each of these different parts. I only had to create my assembly once with the 01 parts. I had to fully constrain them in place like I would with a regular assembly. And then by creating that table, which took me all of about two minutes, give or take, I can now go between these three assemblies and it updates all of the parts. It keeps all of the constraints for me and my assembly functions the way it's supposed to. So that's how we can create an I assembly in Inventor.